I welcome very much Agnes Frank and Andreas Rau. Um, they will, you see it here, uh, um, speak about learning atmospheres in pandemic times. Um, I want to introduce both um, quickly. Um, Agnes Frank, she is a professor for elementary school education uh, at the University of uh, Erf Erfurt and in the meantime the Dean of the Faculty of Education and um, she is um, yeah, she, she, she is a specialist, I would say, in learning atmospheres. And uh, this is uh, her, her book and her habilitation was um, on this perspective. And uh, other research fields are teaching learning settings uh, in elementary school, professionalization uh, with a focus on learning and teaching and uh, university learning workshops. And um, I welcome very much Andreas Rau. Um, he works at the Human Dynamic Center at the University of uh, Würzburg. Uh, Human Dynamic uh, Center is something like a think tank or interdisciplinary, uh, interdisciplinary uh, research institution. And um, he is, um, his research fields are atmospheres as well, field research and perception, and his latest um, publication um, has the title Concerning um, Astonishing Atmospheres in 2018 in Milan published. So I'm very interested in your talk. Please. Thank you very much. It is an old pedagogical topic on which many new approaches are being worthwhile. This borrowing from the subtitle of Horst Friebel's book Atmosphäre im Umgang mit Menschen, besonders in der Erziehung, neuer Versuch zu einem alten pädagogischen Thema, Atmosphere in Interaction with People, especially in Education, a new approach to an old pedagogical topic, is connected with the motivation to research on atmospheres in general and on pedagogical or learning atmospheres in particular. Depending on the theoretical conceptualization, empirical mythology, or didactic claim, you may understand different things with the term atmospheres. Collectively grasping powers, an aesthetic surplus for art-sensitive persons, or the pedagogical chance to emotionally influence attitudes and spaces. There is a learning atmosphere in every room where learning takes place. On closer inspection, this simple hypothesis unfolds unexpected potential. When reflecting on what an atmosphere is and what exactly the specifics of a learning atmosphere are, the no less interesting question arises as to how such atmospheres are created and or can be specifically influenced. Pleasant learning atmospheres seem to be initiated in everyday school life only sometimes in an intentional way. Nevertheless, every pedagogical attitude is affected by the knowledge regarding the influence of space on children's learning. The range of the potential field of research is significant, and with the vagueness of multiple atmospheric influences, the scientific reputation of pedagogy is in focus. Otto Bolno already defines the pedagogical atmosphere broadly as, quote, the whole of the emotional conditions and human attitudes that exist between the educator and the child, and which provide the setting for each individual educational behavior." End of quote. At the same time, he needs to highlight the danger that this, quote, threatens to dissolve all educational activity into an indeterminate harmony of the soul. End of quote. The following is about learning atmospheres and their significance as life worldly, lived, and bodily modes of experience in educational practice. How directly people can be affected by spaces and atmospheres is now becoming very apparent, especially in times of pandemic. This also demonstrates that and how spaces with their atmospheres have a decisive influence on experienced reality. 
which we translated um, lived reality, Wirklichkeit. Temperature, lighting conditions, sounds, smells, materialities, color design, etc. All these influence the room atmosphere and thus teaching and learning. Because affects and feelings determine how the world and reality are perceived, atmospheres play a key role in experiencing and creating classroom realities, which can, however, change. The shift between face-to-face -face and digital teaching necessary in the corona pandemic created the basis for another and new approach to research on the old pedagogical topic of atmosphere. The second part of our contribution presents the results from a phenomenological study gathering the experiences of the realities of two approaches to teaching. The German philosopher Gernot Böhme speaks of reality, Realität, and actuality, respectively lived reality, Wirklichkeit, in order to, to distinguish the measurable components of things and environments from their effective components, that is, in order to be able to address different perceptual approaches to the life world. This is done in analogy to the difference between body and life. Body in reality and life and as, as lived body and lived reality. The wording may be like an interim solution. Due to the Latin root res, the term reality already refers to the field of objects and things. This refers to spatio-temporally self-identical entities that can be perceived from different perspectives and arranged differently. Reality offers the perceiving person a variety of possible appearances of things. With reference to the German term wirken, the concept of lived reality, Wirklichkeit, refers to the wide-ranging appearances to which the subject of perception is exposed. In relation to the reality, it is therefore rather about the being in the state of actuality. Lived reality is related to the respective subject, subjective perception. For example, the yellow color of a classroom wall as a material substance is assigned to a color carrier in reality. It remains constant in changing location and lighting conditions, but has multiple modes of appearance. Lived reality is about these modes of appearance. It becomes important in what particular way this yellow color in a certain place under a certain lighting condition influences the person present as a current appearance and affects him or her. Just one reality can turn into many lived realities. This will be evident in considering the other potentials of classroom design that have been suggested. Temperature, lighting conditions, sound, smells, materialities. And the diversity of their appearances. This is everyday aesthetic life. And in uh, this um, particular image, there was a study from a light lighting company. And they um, researched for the different um, uh, lights for it. Uh, on the left, it's daylight from outside and neon light and LED light or something like that in specific um, luminant looks. And the yellow light is the uh, daylight on the left? Um, yeah, it's from, from daylight from outside and I took the picture because of this uh, demonstration of lighting conditions and a bit, it's a bit yellow so I had this example from the yellow color. In lived reality, the phenomenon predominates and the approach to lived reality is the lived bodily perception. The atmospherically appearing lived reality becomes an object of perception that personally affects all those lived bodily present. In this way, the relationship between lived reality, Wirklichkeit and reality, Realität, can also be dissolved. Lived reality more or less takes on a life of its own. Thus, the subtle as well as the moving atmospheres become a lived reality with its own significance, in part so powerful that the atmospheric lived reality appears as reality. 
With the distinction between the concepts of realities and lived realities, the possible differences between staged objects and their effects can be made understandable. A key issue in the ontology of atmospheres is the criterion of perceptibility. It simplifies the differentiation into reality and lived reality. Quote, Atmospheres are therefore the first and the decisive lived reality for aesthetics. They are the perceptible co-presence of subject and object, the present unity from which their differentiated being can only be gained through analysis." End of quote. As a topic of scientific discussion in general, atmosphere was introduced in pedagogy primarily by Bolno and Friebel. Bolno's definition has already been mentioned. With reference to the emotional integrity in the relationship of child and educator, he explains specific aspects such as the sense of security, mood, trust, attitude, virtues, and school celebrations. Bono assigns a high systematic pedagogical value to the atmospheric topic. And now I have um, another uh, visualization of this atmospheric theme, because uh, the metaphorical approach um, is very fruitful. The atmosphere is that which surrounds us all, at all times. And so includes not only uh, persons that are present, but also the materialities and all that is staged and is lived in a room. And I have made a little test with a picture, um, because this room here is, uh, is atmospherically upgraded by the flowers, for example. It's not cheap to have these flowers here, I, su I presume. So um, imagine this would not have been possible and other technical issues had to be put in here. The room would have a very different atmosphere. It is the pedagogical atmosphere that can be conceived as, quote from Bono, a more genuine, still undifferentiated, but therefore also more comprehensive phenomenon within which the specific and more actively grasped pedagogical reference can then develop. Child and educator are related to each other in a continuous interaction and both will develop from the encompassing atmosphere. Interaction between human beings is also Friebel's focus in his research on the atmosphere. Quote, as a human phenomenon, atmosphere necessarily includes all dimensions of human existence as being oneself, being in the world, and co-being, as well as the relation to, relation to things, the factual relation, end quote. Considering such general atmospheric facets, Pedagogy also analyzes specific teaching atmospheres and prepares attempts to consciously arrange atmospheres. According to Julia Jung, the actions of teachers in the context of aestheticization of the teaching profession could be compared to the weaving of moods, a word that she borrows from uh, Hermann Schmitz. For the empirical research of her classroom atmosphere, methods such as participatory experiences, exemplary descriptions of classroom situations, evaluations of expert interviews and video recordings, and phenomenologically oriented vignettes will be adapted and developed. Already in this kind of research, different lived realities appear. If, for example, in an atmosphere, different kinds of atmospheric effects are identified. Learning atmospheres can be understood as experienced pedagogical spaces that are constituted by all offered, available and perceivable objects, which include not only things, but also human beings and their moods. All perceivers are surrounded by a common atmospheric lived reality. Therefore, learning atmospheres take into account not only the didactic arrangement of the teachers, but also the appropriative perception of the learners. Whether the learning atmosphere was, is, or becomes positive, 
that is conducive, conducive to learning is then highly dependent on the situation and needs, making specific statements challenging. Now I, I'm coming to our research. We explain our research interest as follows. How children and teachers experience the atmospheres of rooms, what experiences are associated with them, relates to a great extent to the bodily dimension of learning and teaching. People experience rooms and atmospheres directly. They are affected by them. Therefore, rooms with their atmospheres have a decisive influencing on learning and teaching. Temperature, lightning conditions, sounds or color designs. All of these are directly perceived and these aspects influence learning and teaching by promoting or hindering it. Therefore, atmospheres represent the experienced space which is constituted by all objects offered, present or perceptible in the room, which includes not only things but also people and moods. Consciously or unconsciously created learning atmospheres are important experiences for students and teachers. They determine the experience of the reality of pedagogical rooms and institutions as well as of didactic contexts. It can be assumed that digital teaching fundamentally restricts these ways of experiencing rooms and shared presence. There is already research on how teachers and students experience learning rooms and what influences the experience of atmospheres and, as a consequence, teaching and learning. Due to the corona pandemic and the lockdown it caused, most classes no longer took place in a lived classroom, but in a digital one. Different classroom realities developed as a result of the shift from face-to-face -face teaching to digital teaching. Therefore, our purpose is to ask teachers about their different lived realities. For an understanding of teachers' experiences, be focused on the following questions. First, what is your understanding of learning atmosphere? Second, what is the importance of learning atmospheres for teaching and learning? Third, what opportunities do you have to support a positive learning atmosphere? And last, what challenges do you see in creating a positive learning atmosphere, especially in a digital classroom? Due to the restrictions imposed by the pandemic, we used an openness-based questionnaire to capture teachers' subjective experiences and thinking. The data will be analyzed using the phenomenological anal analysis according to Meiring. The concern is to take phenomena from the point of view of the subject and his or her intentions as a reference. A reduction to the essence is expected by variation of the phenomena. While there are some similarities, the evaluation also reveals fundamental differences in the reality of present or digital learning atmospheres. In addition to the bodily dimension of educational action, these other realities also make people aware of the possibilities and limits of digitalization. In order to be able to classify the results and compare the realities, we asked the teachers about the following questions, questions with regard to face-to-face -face teaching and according to digital teaching. First, an understanding of learning atmosphere, Second, the importance of learning atmospheres for teaching and learning. Third, the possibilities to support a positive learning atmosphere. And last, we asked about the challenges in creating a positive learning atmosphere. The results indicate that all teachers attach a high to very high importance to the learning atmosphere in both realities, as it can positively influence students' learning. The teachers also commented on the characteristics of a pleasant learning atmosphere in school and lessons from their point of view. For the teachers, this is mainly characterized by room design, also for digital rooms, the teacher-student relationship and the social climate. The classroom is seen as a learning partner. It should be clean, tidy, bright and friendly, respectively well-structured and clearly arranged, the digital classroom. It is important to contribute to the well-being of all with an affectionate design and to strengthen the sense of community and thus support the social climate. 
In particular, friendliness, good communication between all those involved in teaching, rituals and humor are mentioned here. Teachers attach the same importance to the learning atmosphere in both realities, and from their perspective, the characteristics are similar, e.g. the teacher-student relationship, discipline and structure, lesson planning from the student's point of view, an appreciate attitude towards the students or communication. I would like to present some examples of the teacher's statement. They focus on the importance of lesson planning, e.g. by offering open forms of learning, also in digital lessons, and the de design of the classroom, e.g. a well thought out seating arrangement or the visualization of the material in the digital classroom. Furthermore, they ad address discipline and structure, e.g. by setting rules and rituals in both realities. When planning and teaching lessons, the teachers are guided by the individual skills and personalities of the students. Also, teachers considered as fundamental for a good learning atmosphere to create a trustful teacher-student relationship and a pleasant social climate, which are characterized by non-violent communication and a friendly, respectful and helpful cooperation. In this way, an appreciate collaboration can succeed. In context of digital teaching, the teachers highlight the variety of learning opportunities presented in a structured manner. In addition, motivating the students is mentioned several times, e.g. through stimulating material or humor. The use and the availability of technology are also mentioned several times. It is more difficult to perceive a positive learning atmosphere in digital lessons from the teacher's perspective. Nevertheless, <coughs> teachers note that they make every effort to ensure that a positive learning atmosphere can be experienced by the students in digital lessons. The challenges the teachers face when trying to create a pleasant learning atmosphere in their digital lessons are clearly mentioned. A lack of time and student behavior play a role as they do in face-to-face -face instruction. In this context, an inhibiting disorder refers to the lack of clarity in digital classrooms. In addition to the technical difficulties, the children's home context is mentioned most frequently, especially the different material resources and support options available, which are influenced by the presence or absence of parents, for example. The physical distance between teachers and students is also described as a challenge. Some of the teachers refer to face-to-face -face and digi digi digital teaching as two lift realities and others as one lift reality with different approaches. They point the difference between the two lift realities or the different approaches such as the possibility or impossibility of establishing a trusting teacher-student relationship. Teachers also mention that teaching in digital classrooms is mainly centered on transferring knowledge or that teaching is made more difficult by the use of technical equipment. In the end, teachers point out that the student's behavior, motivation and performance are different in the two realities. Atmospheres are difficult to operationalize. It is significant that learning atmospheres are perceived differently since an atmosphere is never objective in terms of spatial relationship and invariant perceptibility. For example, during a class party, a teacher might try to provide similar conditions for all of the children, trying to make everyone as happy as possible. However, each child might report different atmospheres they experienced at the party. On the other hand, an atmosphere can, as can also be perceived intersubjective as a common room. This means as an involved experience, even if the character of the atmosphere changes over time. In the context of teaching, in the sense of a pedagogical mediation work, it is also important to note that every educational room has a prevailing atmosphere which may appear to be differently pronounced with respect to the moods of those present, especially with regard to the sensual and meaningful presence of materialities. As Schütz Eichel said, the atmospheric references in the classroom correspond to the various aspects of learning, each with its own word appropriation. 
This means the impression of the surrounding qualities and one's own physical condition in the lift room has a characteristic impression with a tendency to the beautiful. This reference to the surrounding qualities is orient oriented to the atmospheric situation of all present. It is thus about the diversity of the common perceived situation. In this commonness mood arise, and those who are not present cannot influence the atmosphere. This once again highlights the importance of embodiment in face-to-face -face teaching and clarifies what could not take place in the pandemic in this way. Aesthetic adjusting screws such as changing one owns position in the classroom, changing the seating arrangement, darkening, regulating temperature or ventilation, or even digital possibilities of mobile aesthetic influencing factors such as project projecting images or colors onto school boards. All of this has consequences for teacher training programs. The atmospheric competence is one acquired in everyday life and therefore does not have to be newly acquired in seminars during academic studies. All situations in which you are bodily present represent an engagement with atmospheres. The extracurricular and the everyday experiencing can, can thus be consulted for the development of one's own atmospheric staging qualities. How one creates and feels atmospheres is experienced with each seminar session attended, with each learning field in different spaces of university, and with each party attendant, with each celebration in different environments and situations. Distance learning via digital learning platforms from home is conceivably suboptimal for the development of the atmospheric competence, which then later becomes important for designing learning atmospheres or for ad hoc influencing of learning atmospheres. It would be constructive to specifically reflect on these atmospheric experiences in order to be able to continue one's own aesthetic work without problems in the change of realities. Thank you.